retainer out. Video time commencing. Hi everyone, I'm Maya and today we are having a lovely evening chat about books and tea. You've got peas and carrots. You've got you've got football and jalapeno poppers. And you've got books and tea. And I'm final about that. My sister says it doesn't make sense. I disagree. I have created five categories based around teas of books to suggest to you all. And without further ado, let's hop right into it. So, the first category we have today are happy books for a happy tea. Tivana's Youth Berry Tea. A refreshing sweet pineapple and fruity acai berry infusion with a subtle floral finish. To me, this tea represents kind of my childhood. This is what my sister and I would always order at Starbucks. It was delicious. It was a lovely, delicate, blushy sort of tea. Does that make sense? No. That's just what I read on the back. It says it's a youthful blush. Hmm. The books that go with this are the Lunar Chronicles series. So I'm definitely going to have a video more in depth about these in the future. Uh, Cinder, Scarlet, Cress, and Winter. I do not own Winter, unfortunately, but this series was pretty much the pinnacle of my middle school years, the good parts anyway. The Lunar Chronicles are pretty much fairy tales retold in a sci-fi manner. So you've got, you've got Cinder, who's a cyborg, but also Cinderella. You've got Scarlet, who is, let's see, do I want to cuss on this channel? Yeah, you've got Scarlet, who's badass, but also Little Red Riding Hood. And you've got Cress, who is Rapunzel, but is locked in a spaddle, spaddleite, Blah. satellite. So this series that follows Cinder, Scarlet, Cress, Winter, and all of their friends is about their adventure to save pretty much the planet, to save the world, and to fall in love and make friends. So this series to me is really lighthearted and airy, though it does deal with some pretty difficult themes. I think it does so in a youthful manner, hence its connection to youth fairy tea. Our next category is called All Around the World, and that is because it features none other than the Butler's Pantry Blend, which was based around Downton Abbey. A base of robust black teas creates a standard that is softened with the essence of honey. This tea embodies both the strong, no-nonsense character of Mr. Carson and the sympathetic sweetness of Mrs. Hughes. Together, they create the harmonious balance needed to keep the manor in order. Because the show takes place in England, I decided to compile a list of books that have to deal with the world. The first book on that list is called 97 Orchard, an edible history of five immigrant families in one New York tenement by Jane Ziegelman. And this book I actually read for my creative writing class last year. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It follows, as it said, five immigrant families from all around the world and their experience migrating into America and the foods that they brought to the American culture. You've got the bratwurst, you've got the sauerkraut. In general, this was a thoroughly entertaining book. It's nonfiction which I don't read a lot of. It's historical, it's wonderful, I recommend. Next in this category we have First They Killed My Father by Leong Ung. This book will make you cry. It is not a happy book. It is about the Cambodian genocide. Leong Ung's writing style is absolutely stunning. I was enamored with this book. I cried at school over this book. It follows a young girl and her family during the Cambodian genocide, their experiences, the horrific, horrific encounters they experience, and how she emerged out of it 
stronger than ever and to help make the world a better place. Lastly, in my Around the World series, we have Harry Potter y el Feliz de Fuego for JK Rowling. Um, this is obviously just Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, but it is written in Spanish. I take Spanish at school and it is one of my favorite classes. I love language learning and I find it really interesting to read a book from my childhood written in a different language. It's a really beautiful experience and even though I don't understand probably half of it, I get the gist because I know what the book is about. So Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, there are dragons, there are mermaids, there are mazes and more. Check it out at your local bookstore. Our next category follows the tea, Cinnamon Express from Celestial Seasonings. I went to Celestial Seasonings on a tour when I was really little and it was really cool and I got a free bag of raspberry tea. And ever since then, I've been exploring all of their other teas and this is one that I'm currently obsessed with. And it belongs to the category, The Bold Books. Cinnamon's a bold flavor. Express has to do with making change, paving the way, being bold, strong, advocating for what you believe in. And these books do that. First is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Solinger. And the reason I put this book in the bold category and I'm pairing it with Cinnamon Express Tea is because at the time it was a trailblazer in American literature. Teenagers were a new concept following World War II. In the past, it had pretty much been childhood and adulthood, no middle ground. And after World War II, teenagers became much more of a prominent demographic and ideology in a way because of the way that teenagers were regarded to be rebellious and to disagree with the norms and conformist culture of their time. Catcher in the Rye follows Holden Caulfield, a kid in New York who's really rebellious and makes some really bad choices, but is also really insightful and has a really cool sister. It is a coming of age story. I'd recommend it. It was bold for the time period it was written and it, it, it maintains its integrity today. Next in my bold category, following the Cinnamon Express is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. We've obviously talked about this book before on my channel. It's really phenomenal and it is written in a format that is not common for contemporary literature. Thus, its place in the bold category. Daisy Jones and the Six is written as a transcript of interviews from a fictional 1970s band. And this band was based in part on Fleetwood Mac. And I love Stevie Nicks. So of course I was gonna read it. Daisy Jones and the Six follows the story of this band, their relationships with one another, the trouble they get into, the toxicity of the environment surrounding the rock and roll culture. It's gorgeous, it's well written, it has a twist at the ending. Stellar. Lastly, to pair with the Cinnamon Express Tea, I have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Ricks. The reason this book is going in this category is because when I read it, I was probably 12, and I'd never read anything like it. It was totally bizarre. Of course, it was YA, but it really stood apart from everything else in the category, and that it was based on pictures that this bloke picked up at flea markets. And there are weird pictures where, like, girls are levitating off the ground. This Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children follows our main character, Jacob, and him learning about the world to which his grandfather belonged. And that world is full of, you guessed it, peculiar children. It's incredible. It's really creative. The friendships and relationships in this book always have me in awe. If you're looking for sort of a fun YA for this time in your life, this is the book for you. All right, we're gonna take a quick intermission while I wash this mud mask off my face because it's drying and I'm having a hard time blinking. So I will be right back. Mm, it's almost bedtime. Alrighty everyone, my next category of books falls under one of my favorite teas that I actually just finished, which is tragic but true. And that tea is none other. Then, Red Tea, Good Hope, Vanilla. It is a Roy Boss tea. It is caffeine free. It is vanilla beanie. I rhymed. This tea is delicious. It's an African rooibos. It's really subtle in flavor, but really calming. I enjoy it, especially after a long, hard day of online school. And the books that fall under this hopeful, 
hopeful category are as follows. Perks, Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shbosky. This book, oh, it gets me every time. It follows Charlie, who's played by Logan Lerman. Logan Lerman, right there. The story follows Charlie, and he is entering high school. He's going to be a freshman, and his life is not in the best place right now. He has recently lost his best friend. He doesn't really have any friends at school anymore. He's having a rough time with his mental health. His family is having a little bit of a hard time. He's just, he's just struggling in general. And that all begins to change when he meets Sam, played by Emma Watson, and, oh God, what's his name? Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. Ezra Miller. I mean, talk about a star-studded cast. He meets them. They're seniors, and they are nonconformists. In the words of Patrick, he used to be cool until Sam introduced him to some good music. Come on, Eileen. I swear, Eileen, at this moment, you mean everything. This book is really hopeful. Although Charlie has his fair share of struggles, not only with his personal life, but with his social one, he comes to realize that recovery is possible and that he can forge a better life for himself if only he lets other people lend a hand. The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. The Hate You Give follows Star, an African-American girl living in modern day America whose life is turned upside down when one of her best friends is shot in an act of police brutality. It is an incredible call to action. It is an incredible window into the worlds of people who are affected by police brutality. It's incredibly hopeful as well. Star joins a movement to help seek justice for her friend who's been shot. Star uses his story in order to show the horrors that are in our society today and the hope that there is in all sorts of communities to advocate for change. Next in my hopeful vanilla Roy Boss tea category is I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai. Guys, I wrote my first real essay on Malala and her efforts to bring education to women, specifically in countries that do not allow women to be educated. I was awed by her story. She endured a lot of suffering, both socially, emotionally, and physically. She was shot in the eye, guys to fight for her cause. And it's something that is really, really important to me is education for females all across the world, education for everyone across the world. And so this is just such an inspiring book despite all of the trauma embedded within it. It's beautiful. Check it out, ASAP. Lastly, in my list of hopeful Vanilla Roy Boss tea is Speak by Lori Halls, 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 Halls Anderson. This book follows a really young girl. Her name is Melinda. Summer before her freshman year, she had a truly life-changing experience, and it was not it was not a good one. Um, she was raped by an older student in her community. She's really fallen into a deep depression in this book. And throughout it, we watch her beginning to realize what has happened to her and decide to advocate for those who have also endured sexual harassment and abuse. Especially in wake of movements like the Me Too movement, I think it's really important to read books about sexual harassment. It's such a real part of our world and we can't shy away from it. We need to, we need to realize that it's there, realize what we can do to help stop it and protect people around the world, whether female, male, or any other gender. Also, she gets donuts early in the morning with her dad. And that's a sweet part you can look forward to. The last category is potentially my favorite tea of all time. And that was a very difficult thing to decide because I love all the teas in the world. But this one has a special place in my heart. This delightful hand-processed green oolong is grown high in the Fu Fujian Mountains in China. Famous for its milky taste and silky texture, this tea has the alluring fragrance of sweet cream and pineapple. The flavor is smooth with light orchid notes. So, I mean, obviously I had to buy it. Pineapple and silky and milky and orchids. Despite the fact that the flavor of this tea is quite subtle, even if you steep it longer than it says to, it's a really unique flavor and I find it incredibly calming. So, that is why it is representing my grounding books. 
Under the Milk Oolong category today, our first book is Heart Talk by Cleo Wade. This is a poetry slash illustration slash self-help slash note to self book. I don't really know how to describe it. This book just makes me really happy and it makes me really put into perspective what's going on in my life and what I'm worried about and how the things I'm stressed about are so minute compared to other people's and so manageable. And it makes me feel really connected to myself and to the people around me and the world around me and give it a try. Our next book is an anthology of Pablo Neruda poetry. A lot of Neruda's work is about nature or about the human condition, both of which I'm a sucker for. He won the Nobel Prize and one of the quotes that the Swedish Academy wrote when he was awarded this prize was, in his work, a continent awakens to consciousness. And that is so true. Pablo Neruda really captures the lives in Latin America. He's very proud of his culture. He's quite political, which I wasn't expecting, but it's not a bad thing. And these, ugh, there are 600 poems in here, guys. You can tell it's a chunky monkey. Pablo Neruda is incredibly well written, incredibly eloquent, has beautiful things to say. When I read him, I feel peaceful. I hate to say it, poetry is a dying art form and it makes me so sad because I love poetry. I find it incredibly moving and touching and I think it is kind of a blend of writing and music, music without the music. Does that make sense? Rhythm, it has rhythm, that's what it's got. It's got the steady beat without the glaring trumpets. Every time I sit down to read just one or two of Pablo Neruda's works, I just flip to a random page, I read, and I come out of it better than I was before. Check this out if you are ever finding yourself with a cup of milk oolong tea. And that, everybody, is my pairing books with tea video for you. I hope you enjoyed. I hope the mud mask didn't terrify you too much. And with that, I will say good night because it is past my bedtime and I would prefer not to fail my math quiz tomorrow.